So the statement was very simple. Every time you remove the book from the shelf, do not return it to the shelf. Mm -hmm. Now you can imagine for a Kikuyu boy, <laughs> you know, trying to construct that statement. <laughs> With so all you, the influence <laughs> of the slopes. <laughs> So you can construct yourself, you can now tell for yourself what oh, I'm trying dear. to say and what I probably said because <laughs> at that point, I actually had no idea that oh, an dear. R and an L have any difference at all. <laughs> and uh, the thing I remember most about Mangu was now this was the first school which was fully cosmopolitan because it was actually mm. a it was a national school mm. remember nyeri high school was it's a district your school yeah it's your people mm. you have a few boys mm. you know who came from rich families and mm. their fathers were able to come and negotiate their way through mm. nyeri high school mm. but um, the majority would be your kinsmen yeah so kikuyu yeah accent yeah it's still generally acceptable yeah not only to the students but to the teachers as well the yeah. teachers will shrub the yeah. students will shrub it's yeah. fine yeah then you go to this national school, which yeah. is more cosmopolitan. Yeah. And now shrubbing, you know, the boys are, look, and are looking at you like, what did you just say? <laughs> so my, again, my turning point, <laughs> my turning point uh, in high school yeah. was when we just sent, five, in A-level in, 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 now, in -level, yeah, yeah. Yeah. is when I go to Mangu and the first week, of course, there's induction yeah. of these new yeah. monos, you yeah. know. You're giving a big brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there was never like that. Okay. There was no big brother. Yeah. Big, no. no. You just got in and mm. you started learning. Mm. And uh, but we were called into the library mm. and we were told to we were being inducted. Mm. Because the library was a it still is a very key part yeah. of, of school system. Maybe yeah. university now has changed because of virtual learning. Mm -hmm. But schools it's very central. Mm. So when you go, you have to be told how to borrow books, um, or how to pick them up, how to return them, how to catalog, you know, mm. all that. Mm. And I remember a moment where we were told by the head librarian, who mm. was the one addressing us. Yeah. And he said, you know, if in your high school yeah. or in your secondary school, you are uh, working in the library as yeah. a chief librarian, deputy, or you had any duty in the library, yeah. please raise up your hand. And actually, I remember in Nyeri High School, I was Houston. deputy okay. librarian. Right. So I used my hand. Yeah. And we were about maybe seven or so. The class, you know, the group was big. Mm. We were probably, I don't remember, but we were maybe four classes, each 40, so maybe 160 students. Mm. Then called up, mm -hmm. the seven of us, and each of us was taught to introduce ourselves mm. and say what you're doing and mm. what you remember about the library. Yeah. And the only thing I remember is that, I don't know what I said, but everyone burst out laughing. <laughs> the entire 160. Accent. I At that point, I didn't know what it was. <laughs> and I... I I looked at the people and wondered, why are people laughing? So after that, I, you know, the chief librarian told people, you know, keep quiet. So I so, you know, yeah, so continue. And I couldn't continue because I said exactly the same thing, whatever it was. <laughs> and the laughter, I remember, it was, I remember was oh, yeah. everyone laughing. So I finished finally and they went to the next guy, next guy. And I had no idea why people are laughing. And it is on the way out. Now we are going back to prep. And a friend of mine uh, called David Mongai, who is still my closest friend to date oh. from 1988. Oh, that's really We just nice. happened to come out of the library together. Mm. He had come from a different school in Nakuru, and we, were, we happened to sit together. And now we we're kind of friends. We we're talking. Mm. And I said, why are people laughing? I have no clue. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't tell me. Because I think for him, it was also embarrassing. Like, he couldn't tell. He couldn't tell me. So he's like, you're not, you're not seeing, you're not getting. Exactly. <laughs> so I don't think he knew how to tell me what I'm the challenge was. I'm eager now to know what it, what it was. What was exactly. It? <laughs> <laughs> so when I got to class, is when I found actually the boys who had gone ahead of me. Had, and this was actually when I look back, mm. it was really good they did so. Because mm. then I knew my problem. Mm -hmm. They went and wrote on my desk. You know those desks you sit on in school? Yeah, yeah. They wrote. They scribbled. They scribbled mm -hmm. with chalk mm. what I had said. Oh, each was? Which was that, um, you see, what I wanted to say, you, you have to stop <laughs> laughing. You, 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 <laughs> what, I really, <laughs> what I really wanted to say was that every time you remove a book from the shelf, you must, re you must not return it to the shelf because that's the librarian's work. Okay. Because you're not taught in cataloging. 
You see, the statement was very simple. Every time you remove the book from the shelf, do not return it to the shelf. Mm -hmm. Now you can imagine for a Kikuyu boy, <laughs> you know, trying to construct that statement. <laughs> With so all you, the influence you, <laughs> of the slopes. <laughs> So you can construct yourself, you can now tell for yourself what oh, I was trying dear. to say and what I probably said because at that point, I actually had no idea that oh, an dear. R and an L have any difference at all. Are they different? I mean, I... I you grew up only, only 18 Kikuyu plus has no years L. Kikuyu has no L. the R, L influence. No, Kikuyu has no L. Everything is an R. And uh, therefore, you can imagine... The, well, did it take some training now to have to begin to... Now, this this syndrome, what happened is... <coughs> I When I think about my life, I think I had very high consciousness. Mm. That's what I think. And I think that's one thing that has brought me... I am mm -hmm. a very high consciousness mm. so as soon as that happened I purposed myself to change mm. actually when I realized they are different mm. yeah I, I didn't know this and none of my teachers later. had told me in high school mm. so when I realized they're different I purposed to change mm. so when I spoke mm. like now we are speaking mm. I would take time to respond to construct the, to the understand what you're saying mm. is what you're saying an R mm. or an L mm. and therefore place them and it even changed how I spoke my Kikuyu mm. my Kikuyu changed now because mm. I would pay attention to mm. what did you say mm. and I remember now by the time I went home for my holiday mm. I remember one of my friends mm. called uh, Lawrence then mm. who had been my friend from high school mm. we met I went to visit their place and we were talking and he told me why are you talking like that because my accent had changed and I was spending more time responding. I was, I was, you, you know, improving. I was, I, I think for him, it was an improvement. It was like, I've changed. Like mm. I'm taking time to respond. Mm. I am paying more attention to mm. an R in mm. Kikuyu. Mm. You know, like mm. he couldn't understand. Mm. But that moment mm. changed was life -changing. my entire life. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Change my entire life. Oh, what yes. an induction to, exactly. to, to A levels. Absolutely. So <laughs> that is it. But yeah. you're able to complete the A levels. And, yes. And at, at this time, are you figuring out what you want to to pursue and to do in life? Is it is it starting to what are, what is interesting you? <clears throat> Not really. You see, when mm. I was in high school, mm. when I was in secondary school, mm -hmm. I had caught up on drama. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was doing Theater? cultural drama. Oh, okay. Uh, I never really did drama theater mm -hmm. i did cultural drama mm -hmm. we had this category mm -hmm. of during the drama season mm -hmm. that you could actually do a play mm -hmm. or you could do dance drama mm -hmm. and the dance drama would be maybe 15 20 minutes mm -hmm. it would be music dances but mm -hmm. it would have a story mm -hmm. i loved that mm -hmm. and it was in kikuyu mm -hmm. i had a very sharp voice by the way mm -hmm. yeah sharp tenor like tenor all right and therefore, because when you did the dance drama, mm. if you are a boys' school, mm. the drama includes you have male and female mm. in the drama, mm. you know? And mm. I was always the mm. female oh. soloist. Okay. Yes. Female of, soloist. Yes. Because I had a very sharp voice. So I went through high school mm. um, dressing up like mm. a woman. Mm. I would put on the boobs mm. and the shukas, the mm. traditional ones mm. and the... You know, the we call hangi in yeah. my language. Yeah. It's earrings. Mm. And uh, that's what I did. And mm. I really loved it. Mm. And we would do extremely well. Mm. We would end up in provincials, mm. nationals, mm. until my voice broke. Mm. And I had to stop to drop off. Mm. That was around form three. Mm. So when I went to Mango, mm. I actually kept um, the drama, the, the drama thing right. as much. Right. Um, so that's what I love to do. Mm. But... You know, I guess because of, again, back to nutrition, mm -hmm. you know, I had good cognitive ability. I can't say because it's because I studied a lot. Mm. It was just cognition, mm -hmm. which is why, again, to revisit the global health conversation, mm -hmm. that nutrition is the foundation of education. That's powerful. Yeah. Mm. Nutrition is really the foundation of education because when children are stunted or not well fed when they are young, especially in their first thousand days, mm. they're not properly breastfed, mm. they don't have good nutrition. Mm. That affects their long life learning. Mm. And therefore, irrespective of how good their education system is, mm. 
it actually takes them back several years and mm. they will always be behind those who are well nourished in learning in learning mm. okay mm. and i i actually that's why i say my success in education mm. was not because i was a hard working student mm. yes i was obedient mm. i was disciplined mm. because that comes from my mother mm. my mother was a disciplinarian mm. so that one foundational factor mm. discipline mm. to what you're doing and that's consciousness mm. which comes from my mother because mm. she taught us mm. to do so mm. but then when you go to school mm. the nourishment of her breastfeeding as well mm. for six months exclusively, mm. giving us food from the farm, eating mm. the boiled maize and mm. the sweet potatoes and mm. the vegetables, mm. nourished me. Mm. And therefore, when I went to school, mm. I was able to get good grades, not because I was hardworking, because I was just a regular student. Mm. So when therefore you ask around, what did I want to do career? Mm. That was mm. really secondary. Mm. We never thought about career. Those were not things that were no. here at the front. They were not. Yeah. You just went to school. Mm. And because you're well nourished and you mm. had some level of discipline and consciousness, mm. you passed. Mm. And therefore you went to a good school. Mm. And uh, then you passed and you mm. went to a good school. To the next stage. So when I was in Mangu High School mm. for my A-level, mm. when I, I remember that my first class was actually math, physics, chemistry. Because when I left Nyeri High School, mm. I had a distinction mm -hmm. in maths, mm. physics, and chemistry. A distinction is the equivalent the, of like an A. It's the equivalent of an A. Mm. At that point, it was the distinction. Mm. And to the equivalent of an A. Mm. And uh, when you got that, then you are selected, because the government then would select you mm -hmm. to go to this school, mm. and uh, now into a national school with maths, physics, chemistry as the highest course. Mm. Uh, biology was a credit. It was right. like now a B, mm -hmm. okay? Mm. So when I went to Mangu, I was placed in the math, physics, chemistry class. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which whose destiny mm. was engineering, architecture. Mm. Okay. Mm. So how did I end up in medicine then? Mm -hmm. It is because one day the dean of students, you know, uh, called Mr. Kibuka in Mangu, in Mangu, mm -hmm. came to class mm. and said there are too many students in this math, physics, chemistry class. You guys are too congested. Mm. And it was because in that year, the performance in mass versus chemistry was really, really good. Mm -hmm. But biology performance was not too good. So there were fewer students in the maths, biology, chemistry class. Mm. Mangu was a science school, mm. largely. Mm. Mm. So he says, you know, you, 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 and you. So he called a few of us, said, follow me. And Just handpicked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he had a list. I think they looked at the people who had relatively better grades mm. in biology. Mm. And he called some of us, said, mm. follow me, and he took us to a mass biology chemistry class. So completely by chance? Completely by chance. So if he didn't come on that particular day, I would never have become a doctor because I would You'd have destined in engineering, engineering or architecture. Probably I would be building this expressway. Or you'd have continued in <laughs> cultural dance. Exactly, you know? Mm. So by that chance, mm. I ended up in a biology class, mm. and therefore my destiny changed. Not by choice, mm. by chance. And that's how I ended up now, again, got good grades in the biology, chemistry, and math, and ended up in medicine. So there was no career consideration. That is just an incredible thing to think that you are not thinking about these kinds of things when you're no. growing. No. Your interests are and passions are in other, you're just a young man growing up being happy. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. And I think for me, the pressure that I see us putting on our children right now on select your career, what do you want to do when you grow up, is completely unnecessary because the role of school is to grow. Is to grow. And the role of school is to discover yourself and to learn. And when you learn, then the opportunities for you are open. Then you choose what you want to do, you see. Because even when I went through medical school, and I, again, got good scores. And medical school would, would be in which university? I went to University of Nairobi. All right. So when I left Mangu, mm -hmm. I was, um, I got again, at that point, used to have 19 points. It mm -hmm. was the highest. Mm -hmm. You had three subjects, mm. and each would be the highest score would be six points. Right. So uh, what you did, the three, therefore, if you scored the highest in each, you'd get 18, 18 points. Yeah. And then there was a general paper. Okay. And the general paper was like social political stuff, mm. you know, like it would be some write about, you know, um, why it's important to love your parents, kind of thing. <laughs> it was general, it was more focused than that. Mm. And then if you scored well, 
the highest you could get out of that was one. Well, one. It was just pass or fail. Yeah. So then you could accumulate 19 points. So when you get 19, you scored everything. Oh, 19 was mm. like, you know, these kids were number one in the newspapers mm. now. Mm. That was the equivalent of 19. And that was you? No, I never I never got that. Okay. I was actually an above average student. Okay. Not, okay. I was not top of class. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Even in Yeri I was never top of class, but mm -hmm. I was above average. Mm -hmm. So I got, um, I remember I got 15. Okay. 15 points. All right. That was enough to take me to Your the School of Medicine. Yeah.